do Nigerian investors prefer treasury bills to startups? It's, is, it, is this a logical question seen in one of the Nigerian daily newspapers based on the ease of investing in money market securities versus the perceived risk of a startup tech company? Well, joining us to answer that question uh, and plus more is uh, Chidima Uweke, partner at Microtraction. You're very welcome, Chidima. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So uh, yeah. does, that, does that question make sense? Startups yeah. versus yeah. TV bills? What, what, what do you think? Well, look, there's inherent differences between the two. Right? When you look at T-bills, first of all, you have to look at the economy. The population here were very risk adverse. Mm. So when you look at T-bills, they're safe and predictable returns. And the returns can be set over a certain time frame. So you're thinking you can do it for five months or for six months, for nine months, for 12 months. Versus startups, which is very risky. And the returns come, you don't know, it's unpredictable. Right. It might come in five years. It might come in 10. It mm. might never come. It might come in 15 years. So, so the inherent difference between the two types of investments is quite glaring. Um, the second bit is around just like the capital requirement to get into uh, either of those two, right? Maybe you could take 50K, 100K, even one, one million Naira and put inside of a T-bill and you'll get your return. But with startups, you need thousands of dollars to right. be able to kind of meet that capital requirement. So it's not access accessible to everybody or, or the typical Nigerian investor. So, so those are the key differences. So it makes sense. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. What is the state of the African startup ecosystem? In your well, book? currently, actually, it's, it's quite expansive right now. We've been, what has happened is in the past, people have put money into the startup ecosystem. And for before, I would say 2020, they were really kind of waiting for their money to, to come to fruition, to the, for the investment to show them something, right? Mm. So now, Flutterway, um, Paystack happened in October 2020. So now it returned capital to, to those individuals that invested. So because of that, you now see a lot of enthusiasm within the ecosystem, right? Flutterwave is now a billion dollar company. Chipper Cash is a billion dollar company. So investors are, are able to kind of like see their returns now. And with that, they're reinvesting into the, into the ecosystem. Even startup kind of founders are reinve reinvesting into the ecosystem. So, so you kind of see that uh, clerk, you see the full circle. So right. now we have local investors that are more interested in coming in because they understand the horizon. They understand that the market has matured and there's just more money being poured into the startup ecosystem. Now. Great stuff. Speaking of the horizon, speaking of uh, maturing and so on, what, what, are, what are the trends that we're seeing from your view? Well, from my view, um, when you look at it economically, uh, the, I would say the bedrock of an economy is its middle class. So you see a lot of, of, a lot of push in the lending space because for people to, for us to get a middle class, we need to have people leverage their capital so that they can kind of get themselves out of their socioeconomic status or class. Uh, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of companies building enabling so, solutions within the lending space. So data aggregation, things around just like how do you kind of, um, how do you kind of uh, credit score in individuals, et cetera, et cetera. So that's interesting. You also see stuff around blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency, uh, just because we want to digitize right, our transactions and we want to be able to have cross kind of border transactions, et cetera, et cetera. So you see a lot of work being done around that. Um, and then we see a lot of stuff around remote, Aha, remote work because indeed. of COVID. Now, what are the key, um, as far as uh, the trends that we're speaking of, right? The, the, the key issues that startups are facing right now. The biggest issues are regulation and, and to be quite frank, talent. Ah. Um, yeah, so we know about regulations. Innovation is happening quickly. Um, and we're seeing that kind of like our government regulations are not moving as quick mm -hmm. as innovation. So what you see is that two, three years down the line when a company is already building, you now see that the government comes and says, oh, I need to put some regs out for that because, so that stalls that company for about a year, year and a half as the government regulations come into play. Um, so they, we definitely need representation when it comes to that. Um, people sitting that have a seat at the table when these regs are being kind of like brought up because though we need FinTech individuals or technology kind of builders to be in those rooms to help with that. As far as talent, we, you know, we value education. That's, we value education, but we are not putting our money uh, where I'm out is we we have not really put 
pushed a lot of money into infrastructure or even into enabling, uh, allowing people to have access to ed education for free across the board, right? That's not quite what happens now. So, so we have a lot of issues around talent when it comes to like, even the people that have access to ed education when they graduate, they don't get to, there's no jobs. Mm. So they're not actually able to learn by doing, right? They're not applying what they've learned. And in that case, it's, it's a waste of time. 50% of people that wanna go get an education, right? right? They don't get to go. They have the capital, they have the intellect, mm. but they're still not able to, there's no room for them at colleges. So there's definitely a lot of room for us to work on helping people get educated, keeping the talent here, also helping them get jobs so they can kind of, kind of exercise that muscle that they've built over time, and then having those people help build companies and innovate within our space. Great stuff. We're just looking at some data on, on, on uh, startup growth uh, within the African space led by Nigeria, uh, South Africa, and, yeah, and Kenya. Well, why are tech investors uh, necessary? Has there been a, a difference in funding levels in, in, you know, in investors and, you know, yeah. then and now? Yeah, there really has been. Uh, in the beginning, a lot of people were putting money into traditional industries. Oil and gas, talk about land, right, um, manufacturing. A lot of people were putting money there because that's what's consistent, like we said, we're risk adverse. Right. It's consistent capital coming in. Um, and then I think I would say about three years ago, you now started kind of having high net worth in individuals looking to invest in startups. Because at the end of the day, tech investors are important because you need money to build. Right. You can't build without capital. And you know how we are. our economy is in the best. We're, we're great, but yeah. we're not the best. So we don't have a lot of capital, ancillary capital to go and, and build with. We need people that can finance some of these like innovative solutions that are out there. So that's why those tech investors are really important. As far as capital, there's a huge inflow, both internationally now and also local. Because locally, what we found is that individuals are now, like they've seen the pay stack, they've seen the flutter wave, et cetera, et cetera. So now what we're seeing is that local investors have seen what it would look like if they put their money in for five years and leave it there. They might get a hundred times return, they might get a thousand times return, right? Or they might they might lose all their money. Mm. But they're willing to take that risk and diversify their portfolio. So that's what we're seeing. There's more money being poured into the ecosystem now, more than ever. And how speaking of money, just about the 30 seconds or a okay. minute, if you can, how, how is the valuation is working out, the valuations of these businesses? Yeah. These tech startups? To be honest, it's the valuations have ballooned post post um, pay stacks exit, and it's balloon post flutter wave, et cetera, et cetera, only because there's just a lot more enthusiasm and there's capital that's flowing in from outside is lower risk capital. So they're able to take a higher risk on the valuation. So you see companies that maybe don't have the revenues to garner the valuation that they're getting, but they're getting 25 million valuations, 50 million valuations, but their revenue is maybe, maybe their revenue is, you know, 25K per month in mm. dollars. It's, it, at some point, we have to kind of, they have to get to a point where those revenues match the valuations that we're seeing. But as far as valuations, right now, this space is hot, so valuations are hot. Great, great, <laughs> great point to end the conversation on. This space is hot. Uh, Chidima, <laughs> a partner at uh, Microtraction, thank you so much. For thank you. Us.